Hello everybody, Visual Nova here. As you can see, we'll be playing Karawa Shoujo for my very first playthrough on my channel. I'm excited. I hope you guys are excited. Let's get started. I'm not gonna be commentating the whole time. I will try, because it's a lot of reading. It's all reading, basically. With some animations, but the animation isn't a big part of it. It's mostly the story, the characters, and the wonderful, wonderful soundtrack, as you can hear right now. This is only the beginning. I've played through it. I, there's five roots, five different girls you can romanticize. And yeah, it's a, it's a great game. It's free. I'll put the link in the description below so you can download it yourself and choose a girl to spend your days at Yamaku Academy with. Let's get started. A light breeze causes the naked branches overhead to rattle like wooden wind chimes. This is a popular retreat for couples in the summer. The deciduous trees provide a beautiful green canopy, far out of sight of teachers and fellow students. But now, in late winter, it feels like I'm standing under a pile of kindling. I breathe into my cupped hands and rub them together furiously to prevent them from numbing in this cold. <sighs> Just how long am I supposed to expected to wait out here anyway? I'm sure the note said 4 p.m. Ah, yes. The note slipped between the pages of my math book while I wasn't looking. As far as cliches go, I'm more of a fan of the letter in the locker. But at least this way shows a bit of initiative. As I ponder the meaning of the note, the snowfall gradually thickens. The snowflakes silently falling from the white painted sky are the only sign of time passing in the stagnant world. Their slow uh, descent upon the frozen forest makes it seem like time has slowed to a crawl. The rustling of dry snow underfoot startles me, interrupting the quiet mood. Someone is approaching me from behind. Oh, it's the love of my life. Hey, Hisao, you came? A hesitating, barely audible question. However, I recognize the owner of that dainty voice instantly. I feel my heart skip a beat. It's a voice I've listened to hundreds of times, but never as more than an eavesdropper to a conversation. Creepy as fuck, if you ask me. I turn to face his voice, the voice of my dreams, and my heart begins to race. <gasps> oh! It's a pretty lady, I think. I can't see her face. You wanna go? I got a note telling me to wait here. It was yours? Damn it. I spent all afternoon trying to come up with a good line, and that was the result. Pathetic. Um, yes. I asked a friend to give you that note. I'm so glad you got it. A shy, joyous smile that makes me so tense I couldn't move a single muscle even if I tried. Oh no. So anxious. What you gonna say? My heart is pounding now, as if it were trying to burst out from my chest and claim the gr this girl for itself. So, uh, here we are, out in the cold. Once again, the wind stirs up the branches. The cacophonous noise is music to my ears. Iwanako flinches ever so softly against the gust of wind. As it passes, she writes herself, as if supported by a new confidence. Some new confidence. Her eyes lock with mine, and she lazily twirls her long, dark hair around her finger. All the while, the anxious beating of my heart grows louder. My throat is tight. I doubt I could even force a word out if I tried. You see... I wanted to know... If you'd go out with me. 
I stand there, motionless, save for my pounding heart. I want to say something in reply, but my vocal cords feel like they've been stretched beyond the breaking point. Uh-oh. Hiss out. I reach up to try to massage my throat, but this only sends spikes of blinding pain along my arms. Hiss out. Oh, damn. My whole body freezes, save for my eyes, which shoot open in terror. <gasps> Hiss out! The beating in my chest suddenly stops, and I go weak at the knees. The world around me, the canopy of branches, of bare branches, the dull winter sky, a wanako running towards me, all these fade to black. The last things I remember before slipping away are the sounds of Iwanako screaming for help and the incessant clatter of the branches above. Here we go, guys. This is Katawa Shoujo. Fuck. God damn it. Sorry about that. <laughs> Accidentally. Maximize this stupid window. Those buttons are way too close to each other. Anyway, won't happen again. <laughs> but yeah, as, as you see, this, as you see the credits, the beginning credits, I guess, These were, this was a cal collaboration by 4chan, believe it or not. not a, it's not a Japanese imported and then patched to English. This was made here for here but it's based in Japan but it's 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 a fantastic game there's no reason you shouldn't play it unless you don't like reading or you can't read but other than that download it <laughs> take my word for it you will cry like a baby I cry like a baby. I admit it. I'm a man. I have no problem admitting that. Here we go. Here's where it all begins. It's been four months since my heart attack. In that whole time, I can probably count the times I've left this hospital room unsupervised on one hand. Four months is a pretty long time when you're left alone with your thoughts. So. I've had plenty of time to come to terms with my situation. Arrhythmia. A strange word, a foreign, alien one, one that you don't want to be in the same room with. A rare condition, it causes the heart to act erratically and occasionally beat way too fast. It can be fatal. Apparently I've had it for a long time. They said it was a miracle that I was able to go so on so long without anything happening. Is that really a miracle? I guess it was supposed to make me feel better, more appreciative of my life. It really didn't do anything to cheer me up. I, why would it? Oh, you didn't die this time. My parents, I think, were hit harder by the news than I was. They practically had two hemorrhages apiece. I had already had a full day by then to digest everything. To them, it was all fresh. They were even willing to sell our house in order to pay for a cure. Of course, there isn't a cure. Hmm. Depressing. Because of the late discovery of this condition, I've had to stay at the hospital to recuperate from the treatments. When I was first admitted, admitted, it felt as if I was missed. For about a week, my room in the, war the ward was full of flowers, balloons, and cards. But. The visitors soon dwindled, and all the get-well gifts began trickling down to nothing shortly after. I realized that the only reason I had gotten so many cards and flowers was because sending me their sympathy had been turned into a class project. Ooh. Right in the gut. Maybe some people were genuinely concerned, but I doubt it. Even in the beginning, I barely had visitors. By the end of the first month, only my parents came by on a regular basis. Iwanako was the last to stop visiting. After six weeks, I never saw her again. We never had that much to talk about when she visited anyway. 
We didn't touch the subject that was between us on that snowy day ever again. The hospital? It's not really a place I'd like to live in. The doctors and nurses feel so impersonal and faceless. I guess it's because they are in a hurry and they have a million other patients waiting for them, but it makes me feel uncomfortable. For the first month or so, I asked the head cardiologist every time I saw him for a rough estimate of when I'd be able to leave. He never answered anything in a straightforward way, but told me to wait and see if the treatment, surger treatment and surgeries had worked. So I idly ob observed the scar that those surgeries had left on my chest slowly change its appearance over time, thinking of it as some kind of omen. I still ask the head cardiologist about leaving but my expectations are low enough now that I'm not disappointed anymore when I don't get a reply. The way he shuffles around the answer shows that there is at least some hope. At some point I watched, I stopped watching TV. I don't know why. I just did. Maybe it was the wrong kind of escapism for my situation. I started reading instead. There was a small library at the hospital, although it was more like a storeroom for books. I began working my way through it, one small stack at a time. After consuming them, I would go back for more. I found that I liked reading and that I even became a bit addicted. I started feeling naked without a book in my hands. But I love the stories. That is what my life was like. The days became increasingly harder to distinguish from each other, differing only by the book I was reading and the weather outside. It felt like time blurred into some kind of gooey mass I was trapped inside of, instead of moving within. Mmm, gooey. A week could go by without me really noticing it. Sometimes I'd pause in realization that I didn't know what day of the week it was. Mm, that's me every day, son. But other times, all the things that surrounded me would painfully crash into my consciousness through the barrier of nonchalance I had set up for myself. The pages of my book would start to feel sharp and burning hot, and the heaviness in my chest would become so hard to bear that I had to put the book aside and just lay down for a while, looking at the ceiling as if I was going to cry. But that happened only rarely, and I couldn't even cry. Damn, sad. Today, the doctor comes in and gives me a smile. He seems excited, but not very. It's like he's trying to make an effort to be happy on my behalf. Yeah, because you're a depressing son of a bitch. My parents are here. It's been a few days since I've last seen them. Both of them are even sort of dressed up. Is this supposed to be some kind of special occasion? It's not a party. Hmm. You don't say. There's this ritual the head cardiologist has. He takes his time, sorting his papers, then setting them aside as if to make a point of the pointlessness of what he just did. Then he casually sits down on the edge of the bed next to mine. He looks me in the eyes for a moment and grabs my di- no. None of that. It would give him another heart attack anyway. <laughs> Hello, Hisao. How are you today? Great. Just great. Stuck in this hospital with a fucked up heart. Nothing- ne never better. I don't answer him, but I smile a little- well, that was a little too fast. I don't answer him, but I smile a little back at him. I believe that you can go home. Your heart is stronger now, and with some precautions, you should be fine. We have all your medications sorted out. I'll give your father the prescription. The doctor hands a sheet of paper to my dad, whose expression turns wooden as he reads it quickly. So many. I take it from his hand and take a look myself, feeling numb. How am I supposed to react to this? I don't know. <laughs> Pills! Pills here! That's how. The absurdly long list of the medications staring back at me from the paper seems insurmountable. They all blend together in a sea of letters. This is insane. I think I saw erectile dysfunction there for a little bit, so your uh, romantic high school days might not go so well. Side effects, adverse effects, contraindications, and dosages are listed line after line with cold precision. I tried to read them, but it's so futile. I can't understand any of it. Attempting to only makes me feel sicker. 
all this for the rest of my life every day that's how it is son gotta roll with the punches I'm afraid that that is the best we can do at this point however new medications are always being developed so I wouldn't be surprised to see that list fade over the years years what kind of confidence booster is that I'd have felt better if he hadn't said anything at all also, I've spoken with your parents, and we believe that it would be best if you don't return to your old school. What? Please calm down, Asao. Listen to what the doctor has to say. Calm down? The way he says it tells me he knew full well that I wouldn't like it. Am I going to be homeschooled? Whatever my concern is, shows it's ignored. We all understand your education is paramount. However, I don't think that it's wise for you to be without supervision. At least not until we're sure that your medication is suitable. You give me meds, and you don't even know if they're going to work. <laughs> so I've spoken to your parents about a transfer. I mean, what if they're just like... Hardcore drugs to keep him loopy until he just dies. <laughs> Since they, they can't do anything for him. Take these 17 pills every day, and you'll be fine. It's, called, it's a school called the Yamaku Academy that specializes in dealing with disabled students. Disabled? What? Am I? Yes. It has a 24-hour nursing staff, and it's only a few minutes from a highly regarded general hospital. The majority of, of students live on the campus. Think of it as a boarding school of sorts. It's designed to give students a degree of independence while keeping help nearby. Independence? It's a school for disabled kids. Don't try to disguise that fact. If it was really that free, there wouldn't be a 24 hours nursing staff. And you wouldn't make a hospital being nearby a selling point. Of course, that's only if you want to go. But your mother and I aren't really able to school homeschool you. We went out there and had a look a couple weeks back. I think you'd like it. It looks like I really don't have a choice. Compared to your other heart problems, people with your condition usually tend to live long lives. You'll need a job one day, and this is a good opportunity to continue your education. This isn't an opportunity. Don't call it an opportunity. Don't call it a goddamned opportunity. I'm getting feisty. Well, you should be excited at the chance to go back to school. I remember you wanted to go to return to school, and while it's not the same one, a special school, that's an insult. That is what I want to say, to step down. It's not what you think. All of the students there are pretty active, in their own sort of way. It's geared towards students that can still get around and learn, but just need a little help, in one way or another. Your father's right, and many of the graduates of the school have gone on to do amazing things. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. So, guys, this hospital part's kind of long. It, it picks up quickly after you leave the hospital. Just this part. It's the whole background of the protagonist, so... You kind of have to deal. One of my colleagues in another hospital is a graduate. I don't care. A person doesn't have to be held back by their disability. That's what a disability is. Not exactly, Hazel. Stop being such a... Stop being such a doucher. Listen to the doctor. I really hate that something is so, so important was decided for me. But what can I do about it? A normal life is out of the question. It's funny. I always thought my life was actually kind of boring. But now I miss it. You don't know what you're missing until it's gone. I want to protest. I want to blame this lack of reaction on shock or fatigue. I could easily yell out something now. Something about I can go back to school anyway. But no. I don't say anything. The fact is that I know now it's futile. I look around the room, feeling very tired of this, of all this. The hospital, the doctors, my condition, everything. I don't see anything that would make me feel any different. There really isn't a choice. I know this, but the thought of going to a disabled school, what are those even like? As much as I try to put a, posit a positive spin on this, it's very difficult. But let me try. 
A clean slate isn't a bad thing. That is all I can think of to get me through this. At least I still have something, even if it's a special school. It's something. It's a fresh start. And my life isn't over. It would be a mistake to just resign myself to thinking that. Finally, you were being such a... such a depressing little prick. At the very least, I'll try to see what my new life will look like. Your friends don't even visit you, bro. <laughs> and then the one person that actually liked you, even they stopped visiting, so... What do you, what do you want to go back for? They'd be like, oh shit, you're back. We thought you were dead. Damn it. Act one, guys. This is where we get into the actual story. No more background. Just story. And here's gonna talk about a gate for no reason. He likes describing things in extreme detail about random crap. So, let's talk about a gate. The gate looked far too pompous for what it was. In fact, gates in general seem to do that, but this one especially so. I mean, when have you ever thought about a gate? Man, it's a nice gate. I like gates. No. Red bricks, black wrought iron, and gray plaster assembled into a hole that didn't feel welcoming at all. I wondered if it looked like what a gate for a school should look like, but I couldn't really decide. Probably no. Of course I didn't want to go back to get stuck on thinking about the gate for too long, so I entered through it with a brisk pace that felt surprisingly good. Moving forward feels good. So I walk towards the main gate of Yamaku Academy with this brisk pace. I'm alone, as my parents are taking stuff to the dorms, and there's supposed to be someone waiting for me. The grounds are incredibly lush, filled with green. It doesn't feel like the kind of grounds a school would have, more like a park. It sounds awesome to me. Shit, I wish my old high school looked like a park. It was all concrete and some crappy grass. You over here complaining about it. With a clean walkway going past trees and the smell of fresh cut grass and all other park-like things. What is there more to a park besides a bench, grass, and trees? And a disgusting bathroom. Can't forget the disgusting bathroom. Words like clean and hygienic pop into my mind. It makes me shudder. I was... I was about to comment on why he would, that would make him shudder, but... Probably reminds me of the hospital. I shake them off. Start, uh, stay open-minded now. It's your new life. You have to take it as it comes. That's what, there you go, Hisao. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I tell myself. A few big buildings loom behind the leafy canopies. Too big and too many for just a school. Everything seems off. It's different from what I, from what I thought I knew about schools. It's Uncanny Valley. An Uncanny Valley. Even though I was told this is my new school, in the back of my head it doesn't feel like one. I wonder if the feeling is real or caused by my expectations of a school for the disabled. Speaking of that, I don't see anyone else here. It's kind of eerie. It makes me uh, wish there was somebody here so I could anchor myself to something tangible instead of having this feeling that I stepped into another dimension. The trees hum with the wind and the green hues flashing all around me catch my attention. It makes me think of- ah. I was right. It makes me think of about hospitals again. How they say that the operating rooms are painted green because green is a common color. So why am I feeling so anxious despite all this greenery? Hmm. Only after I stand in front of the haughty main building, I surprise myself by realizing why the gate bothered me. It was the last chance I had to turn back, even if I had no life I could return to. But still, after entering, there was absolutely no way I could go back anymore. Step one, turn around. Step two, walk the fuck out of there. What's, what's, what's so hard about that? Feeling nervous and with this realization set in my head, I open the front door. A tall man with bad posture notices me as I enter. We're the only two people in the lobby, so it's only logical. 
You must be ni Naniki Nakai. You're a teacher. You don't even know how to read my name. So you are. Excellent. I'm in your I'm your homeroom and science teacher. My name is Muto. Welcome. We exchange a handshake that is neither firm nor sloppy, and he looks at his watch. You pay attention to the most unnecessary things. It's a handshake. How long do you have to think about a handshake? Nothing at all. Grab, up, down. A hand. Now whatever you're thinking of. Grab the hand and shake it up and down. The head nurse asked you for a brief check-in visit, but there's no time for that now. Oh, should I go later? Yes, afternoon is probably fine. We should get going and introduce you to the rest of the class. They're waiting already. Waiting for me? I don't really like being the center of attention, but I guess it's inevitable in a situation like this. Somehow, not knowing what is waiting for me makes me feel really nervous. Thinking of this, I almost miss what the teacher is saying. Do you want to introduce yourself to the class? Oh yeah! First choice! Many choices in this uh, visual novel. I went through it the first time choosing, I mean making the choices like I would, thinking about how I would uh, respond to the choice, and it gave me a, new, a bad ending with one of the girls, so I don't know how I'm going for it right now, but I always go for yeah, of course, for this first choice. But if you download it, do it that way first. Follow your heart. And then if you fuck up, well, follow a walkthrough. Like I did. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, sure, I mean, isn't that normal? Of course. But not everyone likes being at the center of attention. I'm probably one of those people. But I guess I should be the one to give the first impression of myself. Right, but that's no problem. Let's go then. My heart is pounding in my chest and it keeps me thinking about my condition as I follow the teacher up the stairs. The third door, the third door down the third floor corridor is marked as a classroom for class 3-3. Muto opens the door and enters. Good morning everyone! Sorry I'm late again. I hesitate for a split second at the door, freezing on the spot. Ah, get a grip! This is a big step. I know that. But there isn't any point to worrying so much about it, at least not this soon. Ha, ah, class! I follow the teacher into the classroom and look around, partially so I won't have to meet the curious gazes of my new classmates. It's pretty here he goes talking about the damn room. Why not describe one of the pretty girls or something? The ceiling is unusually high and there's lots of space left over around and in between desks. An entire wall taken up by blackboards and the high, old-fashioned windows only make it seem larger. The students' desks are just standard wooden desks with a shelf underneath for books and wooden chairs with metal frames. Simple and efficient. I stop walking in front of the classroom and face the other students. That looked normal. You're such a judgmental prick. You don't know them. Maybe they're weird as fuck. Like students in any other school. But then, why would they be here? So insensitive. They're probably like me, and have something wrong with them, only it's just not immediately obvious. Then I notice that one of the girls seems to be missing the thumb of her right hand. It's a little jarring. I've tried many times to see who that girl is, and I've never been able to see it. Despite the natural tendency to listen when somebody's talking to you, I tune out the teacher's speech halfway through while he, list while he introduces me to the class. I notice a flash of dark hair and see that someone is looking at me, a girl with really long straight hair that is pretty eye-catching. As she sees me looking back at her, she covers her face with her hands if it will make her invisible. No, it does not make you invisible, I can still see. And I don't know, I know you can't see her, the way that the game does it, it starts panning through the, the shot while talking about one of the, the people in it and you can't see them because it does it too early or something. I don't know. I can't do anything about it. Pause it, the video if you really want to see. 
There's a boy, there's one boy with a cane, leaning against the lockers at the rear of the class. It's weird seeing someone so young with a cane. Another girl seems to be making some weird hand motions. Sign language? She peers at me over the rims of her glasses, then goes back to whatever she's doing. She's kind of cute. So is the cheery looking girl with pink hair sitting next to her. She's really hard to miss. I don't know why I didn't, how I didn't notice her the moment I walked in. Please welcome our newest classmate. He claps his hands and so does everyone else except one girl in the front row who has only one hand. I cringe a little. Ouch. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna hide it by bowing in thanks for the applause I did not deserve. A collective silence tells me that I should open my mouth now. Uh, that's all you have to do? Open your mouth? Oh, okay, so the teacher can introduce himself to you. <laughs> no. So, I'm Hisao Nakai. And after that? My hobbies are reading and soccer. I hope to get along with well, I, I hope to get along well with everyone, even though I'm a new student. Stuttered in front of everybody, so oh no, they, they all hate you now. And after that, I'm being so boring. This is exactly like every self-introduction ever. I should say something more, something more exciting. I end up saying nothing, and the teacher picks up from there. Well, I'm going to end the episode here. I will see you on the next episode of Katawa Shoujo. It'll be more exciting this next time. We'll meet some girls. Some of the girls we can get with. Get sexy with. But that's for next time. See you guys later.